Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be looking over question number two from the 2019 exam, set one. This one is all about the Phillips curve. Let's get into the question. Philip, 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 Philip. To start this question off, we have to draw a short run and long run Phillips curve for an economy that has an expected inflation rate of 3% a current unemployment rate of 6% and a natural rate of unemployment of 4%. Start off by labeling your axes. On that x-axis, we have the unemployment rate. On the y-axis, we have the inflation rate. For the short run Phillips curve, there is an inverse relationship between the unemployment rate and the inflation rate because in the short run, there is a trade-off between inflation and unemployment. That is illustrated with that downward sloping short run Phillips curve. We also have a long run Phillips curve we need to add in. In the long run, there is no trade off between unemployment and inflation. And so it's illustrated as a vertical line at the natural rate of unemployment. Here we know that the natural rate of unemployment is 4%. So go ahead and label that in. At the intersection between the short run Phillips curve and the long run Phillips curve, we find the expected rate of inflation. That is 3%. Go ahead and label that here as well. The last thing we need to do is make a point X where this economy's short run equilibrium currently is. If this economy was at long run equilibrium, there would be a 3% inflation rate and a 4% unemployment rate. But since the unemployment rate is higher than that, we are going to see that as a lower point on that short run Phillips curve. Mark that X. There we have a recessionary gap. That's what we've got going on back in the ASAD model. And that's how we illustrate that here, a higher unemployment rate than the natural rate of unemployment. There is some cyclical unemployment here is what that means. For part B, we have to identify if the current rate of inflation is greater than, less than, or equal to the expected rate of inflation. As I mentioned before, the expected rate of inflation is at that intersection between the short run Phillips curve and the long run Phillips curve. Since we have a higher unemployment rate than the natural rate of unemployment at 4%, that also means that we have a lower inflation rate than expected. You can find that by taking that point X that you already identified and bringing it to the axis. That shows we have a lower than expected rate of inflation. You don't have to add this to the graph, just identify it. Lower, you've got your point. For part C, we have to explain if a lender will be better off or worse off as a result of the lower than expected rate of inflation. To answer this question, think about the Fisher formula. The Fisher formula tells us that the nominal interest rate minus the inflation rate will give us the real interest rate. I is the nominal interest rate, R is the real interest rate, and the symbol pi is the inflation rate in this formula. If we assume that a lender makes a loan at 5% nominal interest rate, at the expected inflation rate of 3%, that lender expects a real return or a real interest rate of 2%. But if that inflation rate is lower than expected, let's say 2%, then the real rate of return will actually be higher, a 3% real interest rate. In order to answer this question, you say better off because, that's the explain point here, the lower rate of inflation means a higher real interest rate since the nominal rate is fixed. Explain using that Fisher formula and you'll get your point. For part D, we have to say what will happen to the natural rate of unemployment as a result of the difference between the expected inflation rate and the actual inflation rate. Remember the natural rate of unemployment is frictional unemployment plus structural unemployment. A basic principle of AP economics questions is ceteris paribus. If it's not in the question, it doesn't exist is what I often tell my students. Since there's nothing in this question that indicates there would be a change in frictional unemployment, time between jobs, or structural unemployment, skills mismatches, there is no reason to believe that the natural rate of unemployment is going to change. So to get this point, simply state that the natural rate of unemployment will not change. 
you've got your point. And there you have it. If you got all of that right, you are on your way to acing your next economics exam. If you like this video, please like and subscribe below. And if you have any questions, ask them in the comments. Then head over to ReviewEcon.com where you can find lots of games and activities to help you practice the skills necessary in economics. If you want to support this channel even more, head over to ReviewEcon.com and purchase the Total Review Booklet with everything you need to know to do well on the microeconomics and macroeconomics exams. Thank you very much. I'll see you guys next time.